Joel 2 verse 28 And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. It is time to spread the undiluted gospel to the dying world. An expository moment wrapped up with the power of the Holy Ghost. This is Pure Gospel Moment with Mac Miracle. Get set for an encounter with the God who changes identity. This morning we are talking about the mountaintop believer. The mountaintop what? Believer. And our text is taken from the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. Philippians 4 13 says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. It means that you can climb to the top of the mountain, no matter how high the mountain is. It says, I can do all things through God who strengthens me. And I see you climbing to the top of the mountain in the name of Jesus. In your life, in your business, you will climb to the top in Jesus' name. Let me tell you this in our service today, mountain here represents your career. Mountain here represents your life endeavor. Mountain represents your goals, your ministry, education, and any other thing that fetches you influence and affluence. That is the mountain we are talking about today. Influence and affluence. Affluence means your control over money. Influence means your control over people. I don't know if you understand me. Influence means your control over people. That is influence. Then affluence means your control over money. Whether in the place where you want people to notice you in your workplace, where you want money to run to you, I see you climbing to the top this morning in the name of Jesus. God answers prayers. I have seen him answer prayers. And whatever prayer point you came here with today, God will answer all of them in Jesus' name. The aim of everyone is to get to the top someday. And being at the top can't just be wished for only. But through cautious steps and efforts. Yes, I know you want to be at the top. I know I want to be me myself preaching. I want to be at the top in ministry. You want to be at the top in your career, in your education, in finance. You want to have steady flow of income. You just want to be at the top. How do we do this? It's not just by wishing. It's not just by sitting on the chair on the couch thinking about it. It's not just by praying and uh, after praying you do nothing. It comes with conscious effort and conscious steps. And I see you taking that step in the right direction today in the name of Jesus. For those of you who have been taking steps, it will be a result. In the mighty name of Jesus. Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14 says, Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14. Brethren, I do not count myself to have apprehended. That means I do not count myself to have arrived. I do not count myself to have achieved anything. I do not count myself to have been accomplished already. But one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind me, and reaching forward to those things which are ahead, the things you think you have achieved already, forget about them. The things you think you have lost already, forget about them. The things you think that are battling you already, forget about them. Forgetting those things, even yesterday, forget about it. And reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Verse 14 says, I press toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. You press toward the goal. You want to achieve a thing in life, you press towards the goal. You want to conquer in life, you press towards the goal. You want to arrive at the destination where people will celebrate you. You press towards the goal. For the purpose of understanding our teaching today, I want to divide the session into three parts. I want to divide the topic into three parts. Don't bother with the sound. And the first subheading is reasons for aiming at the peak. What is the reason for you to aim at the peak? That is the first top subheading we are talking about. Reasons for aiming at the peak. If you don't know the reason why you should aim at the peak, this message, you won't even take it serious. I want to give you the reason why you should aim at the top. The reason why you should be a mountain top believer. The reason why me preaching should aim at the top. After that, we will talk about pathways to the mountain top. 
after aiming at the mountain top, there are pathways for us to pass through to get to the mountain top. Pathways to the mountain top. And after talking about pathways to the top mountain top, I want also to talk, us to talk about causes and ways to prevent fall from the mountain top. It is not enough for us to aim at the mountain top. It is not for us to know the reasons why we should get to the mountain top. It is also beneficial for you to know the causes and ways to prevent a fall from the mountain top. Because it's not about rising, it's about staying up there. Some people have risen and fallen. Some people started ministry, started with bright future, bright golden colors, and they fell. Some people started academically, say oh, they will do well in school. Yesterday I saw on social media, a girl finished in school, graduated. Just a rumor, she has not confirmed whether she had carryover or not. Just a rumor that she had carryover, she committed suicide and killed herself. All the school fees wasted. All the projects wasted. All the tuition fees, everything wasted. That is not our goal. Our goal is to rise to the top and stay at the top. First subheading. What did I say the first subheading? Yes, why should I aim at the peak? Why should you aim at the peak? Why should you forget about anything happening and continually aim at the peak? Number one thing I want you to know is that becoming like everyone won't attract a price to you. That is why you, want to, you don't want to be like everyone. Becoming like everyone will never attract a price to you. So you have to aim at changing some characteristics in you that will make anyone to identify with anybody on the floor. Aiming to be at the peak should ever be your goal because it attracts pride. So if you want to be like every other person, you will not have anyone that will reckon with you. You are admired when you aspire to stay higher than your peers. I am admired when I aspire to stay higher than my peers. Whenever you are in the level with your friends, level with your peers, level with your family, nobody will ask, aspire to be like you. So people admire you when you are higher in that community, in that place you find yourself. Your own ways, your own doings are just different. That is where people admire you. If all you do is what others can or have done, then there is no reason for people to give you attention. If all you can do is what people have done, all you can say is what people have said. All you can do is what people have already done. Then there is no need for people to give you attention. You can imagine you are in a meeting. Everyone has spoken can say, and you say, I have something to say. And what you are saying is what somebody else, an idea, somebody else, they will say, please, we have just heard this. Sit down. So you have to aim at having things that will make you different. That is what takes you to the top. And these are the reasons why you should aim at the top. To be different. When you speak, would this sound like what this another person spoke? When you talk, does this sound like what other person said? Whenever you say something, let, be, let that be that mark of the demarcation and difference. They say, oh, I know this person always has something to make an input with. You get people's attention when you can put on the best of you. The only time you can get people's attention when you can get to the top is when you can put on the best of you. Every one of us have the best and the worst of us. Every one of us can wake up at the worst part of the bed. But decide to put on the best part of you. You are not the only one that has a problem. You are not the only one that has things that want to make you cry. So put on the best of you and forget whatever thing that is making you feel down. Put on the best of you. Colossians chapter 3 verse 23 says, And whatever you do, anything you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. Say, do it heartily. That way you are planning as a go, do it heartily. That way you are chasing as a go, do it with all your heart as to the Lord, as if you are doing it to the Lord. Look at this scripture, you may not understand it. It says, whatever you do, do it enthusiastically as something done for the Lord and not for men. Said whatever you do, which means even if it's your goal, pursue it as if you are pursuing God's goal. Even if it's service, pursue it as if you are pursuing God's service. And not as if you are doing it for men. Whatever I am doing, I should do it heartily. I am doing ministry, I should do it heartily. You are doing business, do it heartily. 
You are doing academics, do it heartily. It is that that makes you have a mark of difference from others. Whatever you do, do it what? Heartily. First Peter chapter 4 verse 10 says, As each one has received a gift, minister it one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace. Anything you have received, make good use of it to one another. Use it to bless another person's life. That is what takes you to the top of the mountain. That is what does what? Takes you to the top of the mountain. Do it to one another. Use that thing that God has given you to become a blessing to one another. As good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Which means you have the grace to stand out. You have the grace to climb to the peak. With the manifold grace God has given to you, you can stand out. You can be different. How do I become different in this life? How do I stand up? Stand out. How do I just live a life of difference that people will see me and say, this one truly is different from the other. The manifold grace of God. Bank on that grace. When you can no longer do it on your own, do what? Bank on that grace of God. Sub title 2. Pathways to the mountain top. How do I climb to the mountain top? I want to share the pathways to the mountain top. Number one, overlook the pains of climbing. Is it easy to climb? Is it easy to climb? Am I speaking to somebody? Are we all sleeping now? Is it easy to climb? Even the mountain climbers don't find it easy to climb the mountain top. It is never easy for anyone to climb anything. If you think it's a, it's a joke, climb this staircase up, climb that, climb, climb that, climb, your, your tie will begin to pain you. There is nothing in this life that is easy. To eat, you have to use your hands, carry the food and put it in your mouth. It is never easy. To sleep, you carry yourself to the bed. Nothing is easy. So, number one thing to do for you to climb to the top is overlook the pains of climbing. In your process to climb up, there are pains. When you see a mountain climber, he throws the rope, climb. Sometimes they fall down and die while climbing. The one that climbed mountain Everest, you can imagine the pains he conquered. Now compare these things to your life. Sometimes you need to go to make something, maybe your school, academic, to study something. Nobody is out there to sponsor you immediately. That is one pain. Overlook the pain, keep on climbing. They look at you and relegate you, talk to you anyhow. And you know that the way they are talking to you, you are bigger than that. Overlook the pace of climbing. Sometimes there are some things you see, you want to cry. Overlook the pace, continually climb. You want to achieve one thing or the other. But the challenges, the insults, the things you are seeing are making you want to give us like, no, 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 I'm not doing this thing again. I'm not doing this again. Enough is enough. Overlook the pains of climbing. I usually tell somebody that Jesus would have said on the cross that he isn't doing again. Because of the pains of the cross, pains of the nails, pains of the things they used to flog him. Please don't shake the laptop. He would have said, I wouldn't do this any longer. But he overlooked the pains. Overlook the pains of the climbing. If you want to get to the top, there must be pain. There must be insult. There must be relegations. There must be things that people will do to you. That you begin to question God sometimes. Overlook what? The pain. Somebody say, I will overlook the pain. Say, God, give me the grace to overlook the pain so that I will arrive at the great destiny. And God will give every one of us the grace to overlook the pain in the name of Jesus. Number two, resist the weight of gravity. Do you know that for us to stand up, there is a weight of gravity. Impacting upon us. Even the ones climbing the mountain, they are overcoming the weight of gravity. For an aeroplane to fly on the sky, it overtook the weight of gravity and then fly up. The aeroplane engine is made in a way that it will overcome the weight of gravity. Normally, a metal is not supposed to fly up, but they made it in a way that it overcomes the weight of gravity and fly up. You can see big cargoes, they carry Weighty things. A cargo will carry another plane, another helicopter, one machine inside and still fly up. It overcame the, overcomes the weight of gravity. 
So in everything you do in life, there is a weight of gravity pressing you down. Say, this one, you will not achieve this. It's weight of gravity. And to us humans, there are different types of gravity that is compelling on us. Number one type of gravity is negative friends. Negative friends will not allow you to get to the top. Search your corner. Search your friend's hood. Search the people you call friends. Check every other one after the other. Are they the kind of people you should call a friend? Are they the kind of people you should keep as friends? They are not the people you can call friends. If they aren't the people you should call friends, do away with them. Because they will pull you back. You will be running to be as if they tied something on your leg. You won't be able to go further. These are gravities that will make you not to be able to climb to the top. You can imagine climbing the mountain and they say, who your friend and me climbing. You won't be able. Unless the friend is pushing you up. That is the kind of friend you need to keep. Apart from that, overcome them. Leave them. Number two example of the weight of gravity you need to overcome is the opinion of spectators. They will give you all manner of uh, opinion. This thing you are doing, don't you think you should have done it like this? This market you are saying, said, don't you think you should have stopped stop selling the market, use the money to buy something, buy iPhone? Don't you think this other one you are doing, this school you want to go, do you think you should really go to school, use the money to do this, do that? Do you think you should really read, follow us, let's go and party? Do you think you should really read your Bible? Do you think you should really study? These are negative opinions of spectators. They are the ones watching you climb the mountain. They know how you will shine when you get to the mountain. They know that the world will see you when they see you on the mountain. You see negative opinions of people. I will be deceiving you by telling you I'm not fighting people. Fighting battles in this ministry. But I will overlook the opinions of men. I will overlook negative friends. I will say no way I will keep on climbing until I get to the top. Negative opinions of men. Negative images. Image formation. Yet I will say no. I will get to the top. So overlook the opinions of men. They will come to tell you what does not rhyme with the scripture. They will say, do this. Calculate it on your own. This thing they are telling me to do, does it rhyme with the scripture? Say, this is one thing that will tie me a rope and bring me down from climbing this mountain. No, I will not take this opinion. Negative opinion of men. Number three, your thoughts. Your own thoughts. We are talking about some kind of gravity that will weigh you down from the mountain top. Your own thoughts. Don't ever in your life think that you can't make it. Don't ever think in your life that you, you think that you can't feed people. Don't ever think that you will not train people in school. No matter what you are seeing today, it does not have anything to do with your tomorrow. It is only a staircase to take you higher. Every battle you win is a staircase to your victory. When you win this battle, you have climbed one. You win another battle, you have climbed two. You are going up. You win another battle, you have climbed three. You win another one, you have climbed up. You are shaping your height. It is the battles that you have won that propel you to the height of victory in life. The battles you have won. It is the battles I have won that will take me to the topmost top of the mountain. If you don't win any battle, you are not going hard. How do, we, how do people call us victorious? It is when you have conquered. So your own thought is also something you need to win. I need to fight against negative thoughts. Every one of us think. Sometimes we begin to think, will I actually make this? Will I actually accomplish this? Overcome that negative thought. Say, casting down every imagination that exerted itself against the knowledge of Christ. Cast it down. Every evil imagination, I cast you down by the blood of Jesus. Every negative thought, I cast you down by the blood of Jesus. When negative thoughts come, say, the blood of Jesus against you. Any negative thought, we say, oh, but see your family now. Is there anybody in your family? That he can look up to. So how can people look up to you? I cast it down. That is why I was born. So that I will be different from my family. Do you understand me? Did anybody actually go to school and make it in your family? Okay, the one that went to school, they got any good job. I cast you down by the blood of Jesus. That is why I came. To make a mark of difference. Don't you see how people are dying? People of your age, mate. Are you actually sure when you sleep, you will wake up? I cast you down by the blood of Jesus. In your mouth, in your mind. Speak it out and say it in your mind. Don't allow those thoughts. Those thoughts are seeds. I have thought about something and the thing comes to pass. I have told you how I talked about this church. Thought, I think, think church comes to pass. The next one I'm thinking about is God bring drum set, bring people who will play the drum, bring people who will pray. I pray them and I take them. God make this place to full. Get to the field to the brim. I think about them and they are happening. And God is bringing us, which means if positive things 
You can think about a positive thing and something happens. That means negative thoughts can also happen. Have you ever thought you are thinking about somebody immediately the person walks into the room? Or you are thinking immediately the person calls you? It has happened to me. You are thinking or you are talking about somebody, the person came out immediately. That is to tell you that our thought magnets the unit, propels the forces of universe to push the things we are thinking about. Your thought works with the force of universe. So when you negative thoughts come in, say that blood of Jesus, can, you can shift your chair a little bit back. You see that blood of Jesus, I resist this thought. Every negative thought you resist it. Do you understand me? Say this thought, I come against you. Another thing is the present circumstance. It's a gravity that we want to weigh you down from climbing. If you check yourself, check myself, you know that everything is not the same way you want it to be. Search your heart. There is something you want to accomplish that you have not accomplished. That is the present circumstance. Ask yourself, the way you are today, was it how you were before? The things you are looking for today, tomorrow you will get them. Because the things you are looking for yesterday, you have got some of them today. So don't allow present circumstances to make you want to kill yourself. Don't allow present problems to make you want to kill yourself. These are gravities that want to make you not to be able to climb up. Sometimes you want to climb, you want to climb. You just say, I don't know how to do this again. You want to go out for soul winning. You know, I don't know how to do this again. You want to pray for your life, pray for your destiny. The present circumstances affecting you. Now making you not want to know what to do again. Let me tell you, don't allow present circumstances weigh you down from tomorrow. Satan is another gravity. This is why you must be prayerful. Satan is like a gravity that tells upon people, presses people that makes people, you, you won't go anywhere. He said he came to kill, to steal and to destroy. He came to steal people's destiny, to kill them from uh, making them not to be able to accomplish destiny. So since you know that this is what Satan does, he said, I am not ignorant of the devices of the devil. So we are not ignorant. We know what the devil can do. So you rise against him in the place of prayer. How do I get to the mountain top? We just finished explaining some gravities. Number three now. Kill the spirit of shyness and fear. In your occupation, in your career, in the academics, in business, there are two things you must kill if you will get to the top. Shyness and fear. Shyness has deprived people of shining. What did I say? Shyness has deprived people of shining. It is shyness that we make when they say, come and do this. You say, but can I do this? Can I do this? You don't know you are depriving yourself of shining to the world. You don't know who can see what you have done. Shyness will make you, okay, pastor can say, go and speak to this person. I give you the authority. Go and speak. Pray for you, God, that you reach there. I, say, I won't talk. I won't be able to pray for this person. But you have been given the power. You say, I'm shy. I don't know how to do it. You don't know whether that person you are praying for will be the next person that will change your di- change your generation. Shyness reduces people from shining. Fear. Say he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of boldness and of sound mind. That is the spirit he gave you. The spirit of what? Sound mind. So don't allow fear and shyness to reduce you from being a mountaintop believer. Everything you need in life, God has provided it in the cross of Calvary. He has already provided everything. You are a mountain top believer. Come on, say I'm a mountain top believer. Say it like you believe it. Me, I am a mountain top believer. So don't allow shyness. Don't allow fear. Don't allow anything to come to reduce you from what God has made you to be. No way. Say I will make it in this life. For it helped others on your way up. We are talking about pathways to the mountain top. Help others on your way up. The little cup of water you give to somebody, it's, you have done a big great thing. You don't need to have everything in life for you to help anyone in life. You don't need to have everything in life for you to help anyone. The little cup of water, a little cup of curry, a little cup of rice you give to somebody, I bless the person. Your clothes that you can share and give somebody, say, take this one, you have been a blessing to that person. Don't allow stinginess, selfishness, make you not to be of help. Be of help to others. That is what makes you to climb up. The person you help, you don't know where you will see that person tomorrow. The same person you pay transport fare for today can be the one that will pay house rent for you tomorrow. 
The same person you helped on the road that is stranded can be the person you will walk into. In years after school, after NYC, you walk into a company. I want to apply. You see the person as the MD's child. Help people. People are angels. Help them. I've thought about angels, how they manifest as human beings. Jesus said that on the last day, I will tell you, you, when I was hungry, you gave me food. When I didn't have clothes, you gave me clothes to wear. You will begin to ask, where did I see Jesus? I gave him food and hung, when he was hungry. He will tell you that those people you are helping on the road, you are actually helping me. Do you understand me? Helping people takes you to the mountain top. Number five, climb with God. Don't climb alone. If you want to get to the mountain top, do what? Climb with God. Don't climb alone. Don't think you can go to school alone. Don't think you can achieve it in this life alone. Don't think you can have anything that you think you are running after alone. You can't do ministry alone. You can't do education alone. You can't do business alone. You need God. So for you to be a mountain top believer, you should climb with God. In that your workplace, if people do not pray when they get to work, you pray. As you enter office, say, I cover here with the blood of Jesus. Pray. The place you walk, people don't pray. You pray. The place you stay, the people don't pray. Pray. Do it with God. Don't do it alone. What did I say? Do it. God. Do it with God. Number six, do it with your heart. When you, when you are doing something with your heart, when somebody sees you, you will know that this one is serving with his heart. Serving with her heart. If you don't put your heart to a thing, it will not be a result. They say the heart of the matter is the matter of the heart. Put that into your heart. Colossians chapter 3, verse 23 to 24 says, Whatever you do, walk at it with all your heart. When you come to church, come with all your heart. Don't look at your next neighbor. Oh, my neighbor, no, they come every day. Make a follow my neighbor. Don't be like them. The result will not be like their own. Do you understand me? Do it with your heart. Serve God with your heart. That business you are doing, do the business with your heart. Are you hearing me? You are in a workplace. You want them to demarcate you from every other person in that business. Do the business with your heart. Am I speaking to somebody? In your office, let your boss look at you in this and say, this one, the way he serves in this office, the way she serves in this office, do it with your heart. We are talking about mountain top what? Believer. In your workplace, what will give you straight promotion is the way you do things with your heart. Place that thing in your heart. Let it be. Let the work synchronize with your heartbeat. Do it with your heart. It is the Lord your Christ that you are serving. That is the last part of the scripture. Said in knowing that you will receive the reward of an inheritance from the Lord, you serve the Lord your Christ. Sob head in three. Causes and ways to prevent fall from the mountain top. What are the causes of you know do you know some people write to the top? All of the northern fear. Well you know say, but this is the man I know. I know how this man was helping people look at his life. Have you seen people talk about like that? Do you not say, I know this woman. I know how her business was before. What happened? I know this family. I know how they used to shine before. What happened? That will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. So the path of the just is like a light. It shines brighter and brighter. Your own path will shine brighter and brighter to the perfect day in the name of Jesus. Anything that wants to bring you down, I bring that thing down in the name of Jesus. God answers prayers. Now, what are the causes? The people that are falling from the mountaintop, what are the causes? And how will you prevent a fall from the mountaintop? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. NID says, So if you think you stand, friend, be careful lest you fall. Let he that thinks he stands, take heed, lest he fall. Some of you say, I, I can't fall. Don't get to a point say, This business. So he said, Therefore, whoever thinks he stands must be careful not to fall. You think you are standing? Say what? What did he say? Be careful not to fall. You think I have work already now. I am employed. Uh, I have all salaries coming every day. I am settled. I don't need God. I don't need all these things. Be careful lest you fall. Let him that think he stands, let him fall. Anyone who stands without God is standing in one leg. And this leg cannot carry you more than one hour, two hours. You fall. 
So you, are, you need to stand with momentum, stand with God. What are the causes of poor and how do I prevent it? Number one, competition. In family, people compete. You see people competing with their neighbor in yard. In what place people compete? See people competing in what place? This one dress, this one, I will dress this one next tomorrow. You don't know whether they dash the person. You are using your salary to buy, to compete. You don't know whether they dash the person. Competition leads to fall from the mountain top. A mountain top believer does not compete. See, they, those who compare themselves with others are not what? They are not wise. The scripture says so. So avoid competition. You hear me? Competition leads to limitation. Competition does what? Leads to limitation. If you want to limit your life, then be competing with people. You will just find that the money you are supposed to use to do something better, to better your life, you will be competing with somebody. Oh, this person wore this hair. I will go and buy my own. You don't know, say that person, I borrow push. The person borrowed. For you, you have used money you are supposed to pay school fees or do something to buy it. Competition on those one. You should learn from your pastor. I learned a lot. The last thing your pastor will do is to borrow. I will never. Do you know that some people in ministry, they can borrow? I can borrow now in the ministry now. Let me tell you one thing. This one is all of us are family. You know I can borrow now. Let me say go to bank. Collect a loan of 300,000, 400, 500,000. Buy drums. Pay instrumentalists. Then one day I'll feed feeding projects in the church. You know, anything feeding everywhere I'll come. Then the people will be coming, the people will be coming everywhere is full. At the later on, you people will be calling pastors sometimes for prayer. Pastor will pick up. Because pastor is thinking how to pay debt in bank. But the church is growing. Everywhere is shining. Everywhere is filled up. Everything that we are looking for is there. We have expanded the place. The place is fine, gloomy. People will call. You will serve. You will come. Snap. Go. You don't know what the thing happen. The place is shiny like that. You don't know that pastor is in debt. You know why? Because I looked at another person's ministry. But I don't do like that. I grow gradually. That is my own. So I can have a story to tell tomorrow. That there was a time. There was a time we were looking for chairs. There are no chairs. We had only 20 something, 10 chairs. During program, we we'll go and rent chair. After program, all of us will carry chair. But we are here one day. Somebody saw us on Facebook. Say, I saw your program. You people are looking. I didn't tell them we are looking for chairs. They 50 chairs. All the way from a. Uh, I don't know where you people went to carry the chair. I was not even around. I didn't see the person. They went to carry the chair to him. So I believe in process. It may be pay. It was painful that time. People will come nowhere to see. Some step will even go back. Some will carry a bench. Keep your, there used to be a bench here. Yeah. Is there a bench here yeah, again? So life is a process. That thing you are looking for, that you want to borrow today, because of that thing, you are only killing yourself. Borrowing or Ponzi scheme, all these things they do. It's like these two ties now. Digging a hole from here and filling this hole. That's how Ponzi scheme is. They say referrer. Bring somebody. When you bring somebody, that's how borrowing is. You bring this person, the money you contributed is what they gave this person. This person bring another person, the one they contributed, they gave this person. This one bring, they gave this person. Then they want to somebody enter and say, me, I'm not contributing, I'm not giving. That is how Ponzi scheme, MMM. That's how all of them crash. Because you dug a hole to fill another hole. One day this hole Another person will not feel it. It has remained empty. The business has crashed. That is how borrowing us does. That is our competition. It is competition that leads to borrowing. Competition leads to what? Borrowing. When you borrow, nobody is at rest. It's too dead. My wife was teaching. I'm not ashamed to talk about this. She's a disgrace. So I have to talk about it. Not my wife. It's too dead. She was training. A disgrace to people. Borrow. They carried her BVN. Put on a distance. You know, when you borrow online, they will use your BVN. This girl finished and ran away. Now they call people every morning, every night. Every morning, every night. They call my wife every day and night. That they collected her number from the, her student's number that she was trained. That she borrowed. Another person, they call. They call the family. Call this other person. Call this other person. Call this other person through her BVN. My wife does not rest. Until one day we, I come down talk to them. It's, it's her student. You know when they assess your BVN, they assess the whole of your contact. They can even assess your bank, assess your things. And when you see this young girl that did this thing, you will think that she, she can never do something like that. It's on record. Any day she watches the video, she should hear it. It's a disgrace. Run away. If the people knew where my wife was working, they would come and carry her. But thank God they don't know. It's a disgrace to people. It's a disgrace to family. It's a disgrace to nation. How can you borrow and another person is 
If now she not changed the number, they can't reach her. Then they are not calling the family. The mother is sick. The uncle is looking for her. My wife is not at rest. People are not at rest because you borrow money and run away. What did you use the money to do? You didn't use it to go to school. That they will say, okay, she used it to pay school fees. What did you do? You didn't use it to buy a machine for yourself. You were learning fashion. You did not use it to do anything good for yourself. I rather than buying clothes. Please, young girls, young ladies, young men in this church, don't be like that. Are you hearing me? Don't ever get to a point in life and say, I want to borrow. See them online, they will say, come and borrow. You think banks do not approach churches to come and borrow. You think they don't approach us. Say, come and borrow. It's church now. From often you'll be paying small, small. It's a lie. When the time comes, church will close down. You will run for your life. Don't borrow. It leads to competition. It's competition that leads to borrowing. Are you hearing me? Try as much as possible not to borrow. Yes, maybe you have a friend, a brother that wants to learn, say, use this, give me back. That one is normal. But when it gets to the borrowing of signing on paper, take my BVN, do this. Am I speaking to somebody? Don't do it. Cut your, put a knife to your throat. Say, this one, I won't do it. That is one last thing your pastor will do, borrowing. I don't. If you see me with broom, that broom, I bought it with my money. Don't worry, let me manage the broom. One day I will buy the brush. That is how my life is. And God has helped me like that. If you see me with this mic, don't worry. Next tomorrow I will buy the more authentic one. If you see me sit on the keyboard playing, don't worry. One day I will be able to employ somebody that will play there. Somebody they will walk inside and will employ them. I calculate my life slow and steady because that is what God wants. Am I speaking to somebody? So don't ever get to a point in life where you say, I need this one, I need no way. Whoever that thinks you are following me are in this church, please put a knife to your throat. Borrowing is like digging a grave, digging hope to fill up. Borrowing is like digging hope from your future to fill up the present hope. Why not bear with the present hope? You have already reached the present. You don't know how the future is. You want to dig a hole from there to fill up your present. Don't ever do it. I've dwelled a lot on competition. Do you know, now, do you see why some people fall down? This is why some ministries crash. Great men of God. If you meet the great men of God in ministry, the first thing they will tell you in ministry, don't borrow to start ministry. And I thank God we are not owing a time. In our marriage, we never borrowed. We never owed anybody a time. I go to sleep and sleep and wake up without thinking that anybody will call my phone. You can't run my number anytime. It's reachable. I can't block it. Because I'm not owing anybody. So be at rest like that. Don't collect anybody's things. You want to go for a program, you want to go for marriage, you want to go for something. Don't get to a point and say, please, can you give me this your shoe to wear? They will respect you if you are contented with what you have. Can you give me this hair to wear? Don't try it. Don't try it. Are you hearing me? Please. Mountain top believer. That is what keeps you different from every other person. That's what keeps you at the top. Say this one will leave this one. They may be at the young stage of their ministry, but I can tell you what Mark Miracle will do and what he will not do. Keeps you different from every other person. Number 14 that causes people to fall from the mountain is distraction. We've talked about competition. One of the proofs that you are determined to succeed is the ability to identify and destroy your distraction. Now, hear what I said. One of the reasons why you will stand out in life is the ability to identify your distraction and destroy your distraction. Stay like this and say, ask yourself a question. What is the one thing that is distracting me? Identify it. When you identify it, you know, there are five chairs, there are maybe there are plenty of chairs inside here and one is not good. And you know that mistakenly, if you sit on that one, you will fall and break your ways. You are true of us. So what do you do? Start searching all three of them. One after the other. Okay, it's this one that is my problem. You remove it. Identify and destroy your distraction. Do you understand that statement? To some people, money may be your distraction. Identify it and always keep your eyes away from people's money. To some people, women may be your problem. Identify it. The book of Job says, I do not look at a woman twice. book of Job says so. There's a verse in the book of Job says he does not look at a woman twice. If anybody needs the scripture, I can Google it after service and give it. The day I came across that scripture, I said, which means I can actually overcome the urge of women. Then I was not even married. I was very young. Say, I do not look at a woman twice. Which means the second looking is what makes you to commit. 
Do you understand? When you see the statue and remove your eyes, I say, I do not. So I, if that is a weakness, identify, say, okay, this woman is my problem. If you don't identify, that means you are deceiving yourself. First, how to destroy your distraction is to what? Identify it. If somebody, their own weakness is woman, another person, their own weakness is man, another person, their own weakness is... There are some people, if you keep money here, they won't take it. I told you how they tempted me with dollar bills. Was it not the other year? Dollar, 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 plenty, fell out of envelope. I packed it back and go and give them back. I if I came to you, text me with money, I will take your money. Line, line. And I identified that it, I easily get angry. That was my weakness. If anybody makes me angry, quickly, quickly get angry. I can act before I recollect that I have already acted. I identified it, so I gradually treated it. Gradually treated it, gradually treated it, gradually treated it. If you, I see that you will send me a message that will make me angry, I will block your line. Later, I will open it and see the message. I will first talk to myself, say this message that is coming, it might, it might change my mood. I will leave my phone. Later, I will first tell myself that this message is, com- is coming, it is changing my mood. But I know who is sending the message. I start talking to myself, I will open. If it is a message that will not change my mood, I say thank God. But if it will change my mood, I have already walked on myself. I do it. So I identified my destruction and destroyed it. You, let me tell you something again. Different people, I've said it, different people have different distractions. What distracts me will not be what distracts you. What distracts me now as a pastor, what will distract me is church growth. I say, God, everything. Church, you may be telling me about, about another thing. The only thing I'll be thinking of is church growth. It will distract me until church finally grows. Do you understand me? You might be telling pastor, this church, this time you watch today as we are preaching it was like this. I'll say, thank you, thank you, thank you. That, that is in your own mind. Me, what I'm thinking is, what next, what prayer point next should I pray? What next should I do for people to wake up to evangelism? What next should I do? You, you are, what you notice is the side that they balance. That one is what is distracting me and I'm facing it. So you, you look for what is distracting you and you face it. Some people who fail never know what distracted them and they weren't honest to themselves. If you are honest to yourself, you know that this is my weakness. I need to treat it. I can't pray. I don't know why I can't pray. I try, I try, I try, I can't pray. This is my distraction. I have to wake up and pray. I have to stand up and pray my destiny out. God answers prayer. I am telling you the truth. God answers prayer. I have seen God answer my prayer that I don't ask God. Let me tell you something. In a quote, I won't just say all the story. Somebody has been like a headache around me. So much headache that sometimes... The person worries, worries, worries. The fact, you know, it is every family people, every family has somebody that their head is like this. No matter how you pray. So this guy worries, worries. When we want to, sometimes we need to like, okay, we need to catch this boy and flog him, or maybe lock him up so that when he comes out, his eyes will open. Any time you want to apprehend him, he will disappear. He will run away. But you will do something. Mother will be shivering. This one will be shivering. This one will be shivering. But when you want to apprehend him, he will run away. His voice will help him run away. So because of that, he beats his chest, say, if you have mine, come and catch me. So he did the last one he did that I wasn't at rest any longer. My wife wasn't at rest. We were so angry. I said, no, enough is enough. Enough is enough. I wrote down his name. I said, my wife, come. I carry anointing oil around him. Round, yes, Saturday. Was it on Saturday? Saturday, Friday. Run the anointing and say, he is the dude. He will commit, carry him out here, threaten people and run away. If you have two head, run out of this anointing oil. I did what I did. I finished praying. I called people in the village. I go to the compound. And they went and hold him where he was. He could not run out. He couldn't run away from where they held him down. I have seen God answer prayer. And after they dealt with him, he said that I have changed. I said, tomorrow he will carry Bible and preach. Me, I take nonsense, but it gets to a point I would take you to where you belong. So, what I am giving you as an instance is that you need prayer. Don't ever pray to an ex- That day, after the prayer, I say, my wife, God, the answer prayer. Or even me, sometimes when I pray finish, I know they know how God, the answer them. But this one, this one shaped me. That somebody like, he has done it close to like three years. They can't touch him. He couldn't run. Yeah, he was the big team there. The same people that were helping him before run, and the people that heard him. They see God answers prayer. So if God answers this prayer, yeah, let's start praying for others. Other things that we need to pray. Don't ever get to a point you think you pray that God does not answer you. 
You pray, God, give me school fees. God, take me to school. God, help me with this one. God, give me business idea. God, give me this one. You pray, finish, you leave. You think God does not answer. It's a lie. God answered it. God does what? Answers. I have seen God answer prayer. The day they sent you out to here, we prayed, me and I, we prayed in church. Say, God, we need expansion. That was the Monday we said we should have fasting and prayer. Say, everybody fast this month. We came to church to do our own fasting. Say, God, we need expansion here. We didn't finish the prayer saying, Amen. I opened my message. Say, where is the church address? We are sending 50 chairs. God does what? Answered prayers. So don't allow distractions make you not to pray. It is happening for you to pray more. Bad things are happening for you to pray more. Don't allow anything to put you down from the mountaintop. You are a mountaintop believer. When any evil happens, it's a signal that you just need to pray more. When anything negative happens, it's a signal that what? You need to pray more. Number three. Arrival mentality makes people fall from the mountaintop. Uh, I don't arrive now. What, what do I need to pray for again? What do I actually need to go to church for again? I actually have, I think at least I can eat in the morning, eat in the afternoon, eat in the night. I can, I can just take care of myself. I can pay school fees of some persons. So what do I need God for? No, that is arrival mentality. Hear me? Arrival mentality kills potential abilities. Arrival mentality kills potential abilities. That thing I think you have arrived, there are still some potential in you that have not come out. You can still become better than who you are now. That you can achieve, that you can buy one or two things does not mean you have arrived. There is still a potential in you that can come out. That I can read the Bible and pray and preach that does not mean I have arrived. I can still have more rema. I can still speak with more depth revelation. So I still need to go more depth in search for God. Don't ever get to a point where I have arrived. No way. Don't think that. You have a BSc. HND. ND. Uh, uh, um, doctorate degree. Uh, OND. Anything. You have not arrived. You have not what? Arrived. No one who ever claims to have made it ever makes it to the next phase in life. If you claim you have made it, you will never make it to the next phase. There are people, people will send me a message. Say, Pastor, you are trying, you know. Young, more, young guy. A man saw me, old friend. I was walking across Genesis here. I was just crossing for evangelism. He saw me say, Child, he has been following us up on Facebook that we are trying. For I see you have courage for what you are doing. For the, 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 the way you preach, the church, you start at this age. No sponsor, nobody you can say. Do you know nobody I can, I can call say, This is my sponsor. Have you seen anybody that your pastor will say this is sponsored? No. It's God that sponsors me. Nobody has say, okay, oh, oh, hold on, don't worry. Flyers, banners, all these things. Somebody from there is sponsored. No, it's God. I don't know how it comes. It's God that is sponsoring it. Have you seen your pastor in the morning say he's going to job, he's going to work, coming back from work? I don't work for anybody. This is the work I do. And church does not pay me. How do I survive? How do I feed myself? It's God. So it's a bold step I took. The, the person said, you are trying, you know, after the person finished talking, I went to home and I sat down. I just told myself, but I told my wife, but there is nothing I am doing. I have not even achieved anything. I have, the, I have the prayers and prayers, they, are, they have not even all been answered. So how will I not be feeling that? The eyes, somebody is looking at me. What I want you to understand is that the eyes, some people are looking at me. That I have arrived some certain status in this society. I am not looking myself, I'm looking at myself with such eyes. I'm looking at myself like I haven't even attained anything. Somebody could tell me, you have really tried those things, love class, relationship things, the things you are doing, what you people are doing in relationship, love class, they play everywhere we feel, almost to the outside. You people are trying. See, me, see, I have not seen anything I am actually doing. So don't ever get to a point where somebody will tell you, look at what you are doing, you finish, you climb down and say, oh, I did well today, I tried to do arrival mentality. And the message I will teach you on our anniversary, Ebu God, you will, you will get to understand that in this life, even the first step you throw from your bed, it is not you. It is never you. Never you. Number four is rest. What makes some people fall from the mountain top is rest. Okay, after I read that mentality, what next you see people do is rest. The only place where there is rest is the grave. Never get to a point where you feel you have done enough. 
There is always a space for enlargement and improvement. Okay, I'm John. I've actually tried a lot. I just need to rest. No, you don't need to rest. At the point where your mind is telling you you need to rest, just know you need to do more. There is no point for rest. It is only six feet below that people rest. And none of us is going to sit below in Jesus' name. Not now. Not tomorrow. Not next tomorrow. You will carry your children's children. Because your, most of us, our grandmother saw us, two of us. So you see your grandchildren. The only place where there is rest is where? In the grave. Six feet below. So you don't have rest. Don't even come here one day finish doing all you do on the altar. And pastor calls you. He still needs to do this. He says, ah, pastor, no, they allow me rest. No, you don't need rest. You need more. Thank you do what means what? Do more. You need to do more. The only place we need to rest is when we get to heaven. Even in heaven, there is no rest. They say we will sing from morning to night. Two of us. We are not even Imagine when we say pray. Stand for prayer. One hour. We can't pray for one hour. Thirty minutes. Everybody is tired. We did night vigil in my house the other day. We tried. We I said we are going to pray up, up to five, six, seven hours. We tried our most. I just put it the paper. We stopped by three hours. But in heaven, they say we will sink 24 hours. We are not eating. Nothing like I want to go and comb my hair and come to church. We are sh- No, no, no. We are already dressed up. In heaven, you sink from morning till night. Morning till night. And there is no morning, no night. So that will be... There are nothing like, let me check time and take break from singing. No rest. Even in heaven, there is no rest. So, train yourself. Walk. Walk and walk. Friday, I was on the road. I was not in church on Friday. I was on the road. Saturday I was on the road. Then as I finished from here, I'm also on the road. I'm going back on the road. An assignment I'm doing. I have to finish up everything God said I should do throughout this weekend. I'm always on the road. Yesterday night I told my wife, I don't know the kind of strength I need now for me to be able to stand and preach. I'm telling you the truth. I couldn't feel my bones because of, I was on the road throughout 24 hours. Said even Friday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday I was on the road. But here I am preaching as if I'm not tired. So I don't need to rest though. You too, you don't need to rest. Until your until it pays. I think uh, how do they say it in our slide? Say don't pay. Say, some people say Mark, I don't pay she. Until God pays you. This one is not Mark. God pays you. And God will never pay you to die and say you are not doing it again. He will continually be paying and you continually be serving him. There is no rest. Second to the last is selfishness, number five. One who lives only for himself alone will bear his pains alone. You are, a, you are never enough until enough people can say enough good about you. You are never enough until enough people can talk about you enough. You are never enough. A mountain top believer never lives for himself alone. I have never lived for myself alone. I pray and pray sometimes in my mouth. My throat gets cracked. There is no week I don't step into here to pray. Pray for me. No. Pray for members. Carry your name stable like this. I pray, pray, pray. Pray, enter your family. Pray back to my own life. Pray, enter your life again. Pray, enter. That is how I pray. I pray. I will pray, pray. Pray like this. Kneel on the altar. Lie down. God, please. I will never hear any bad news from any member. God, even though it comes, as they are texting me that this is what happened, as the text is getting to my phone, healing is happening in their body. And that is what God has been doing. Some of you will call me and say, this is what has happened. Some will call it my mom. This is what my mom is. I say, that one a joke. Set and a joke. Because if it happens, you won't be here to serve God. If it happens, you won't be here to sing. You won't be here to do usher. You won't be here to... You won't even go to Winslow to bring the next person. You won't. So I will tell God, see this one, these members, these few ones you have given me, that will soon multiply to thousands. Nothing evil will happen to them. I pray. I am never at rest. I pray. That is the work of a pastor to pray for you. Are you hearing me? That is the work of a pastor to pray for you. So don't be selfish too. The question I will ask now is, how many times do you, do you pray for your own pastor? Say, a man of God, not a God of man. Which means he has the man part. He needs the part, you also pray for him. Don't be selfish. How many times have you thought about the growth of this church? Let me not. How many times have anybody sat and thought, but what are we going to do in this church for church to grow? This Sunday, people, there are still white chairs beside me. What am I, what is the next step I'm going to take? What, how level of evangelism am I going to do now to at least have one soul in this church? And when I sit, I look like, say, this one came through me. 
This one, even the one I've already come through, you don't be relaxed. Selfishness, don't be selfish with God. Let me tell you, I said, until enough people can say enough about you, you are never enough. So enough people must come together. And say, in the matter of one or two or three, a witness is established. This one will say, say this one, no, 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 this one, leave this one. He can't do this. This one is a dedicated child of God. This one is a dedicated child. Let people be testifying about you. Life we are living, this life we are seeing is, is brief. It's like, it's, it's like paper. Life is like when you leave paper, you have blue. Fear, you come the next minute, the paper is no longer there. That is how life is. So you have to ensure yourself in God to the extent that you are so settled. Come rain, come sunshine. God knows that you are in His good record. Don't be selfish. Your next door neighbor, pray for them. Your mother, pray for them. Pray for yourself. Pray for anyone that concerns you. Don't be so selfish with your life. Some people, even we are selfish to ourselves. We don't pray for ourselves. We are so selfish to ourselves that we can sit down like this, watch episodes, watch soap operas. Watch, 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 watch. One hour soap opera, but we can't pray for 10 minutes for your own destiny. One minute you can't spend to pray for your own life. You can't say to study the Bible. Selfishness to your own life. A mountain top believer never jokes with his life. Finally, number six, avoiding God. That is what makes people fall from the mountain top. When they finally get to the mountain top, look at how it starts. Look at how it starts. Everybody look up. As they are climbing up, just imagine it, a mountain. You are climbing. As you put one step, God help me. Don't allow me to fall from this mountain and climbing. God will help you through another step. God help me. Don't allow me to fall from this mountain. You throw another step. God help me. Don't allow me to go to this mountain step. If God help me. God finally helps you get to the mountain top. The first thing you do is to raise your two hands up. Oh, I made it. Meanwhile, the first thing you are supposed to do was to kneel down on the mountain top. Not to raise your two hands up. As that happened, God give me this thing. Help me. If you do this thing for me, I will serve you all the days of my life. God will give this to you. will give you mark. God give me this one. At this money, if you just give me this one, I will never forget you. You vow. You don't know God is listening to you. God will give you that one. You go back up. Pray for this one. Mama, pray. Mommy, pray. Daddy, pray. This one, pray. Do this one. God will pray. Everybody will pray. God will, God will answer. You reach that one. After you finish this one, God will not see your back or your front again. You think those vows you made to God, God never heard them. He heard them. So, don't avoid God. Without God, no one can achieve anything. I don't preach self I don't preach PGC. Till Jesus come, I will continually preach Jesus. Because I am called to reveal him and reveal his glory. The truth I am telling you and the truth I will tell you to the end of the, the, end of the whole matter is for you to be a mountain top believer, you need to hold God like this. And I love the way many of us here, the way we hold God. Young, young people here, when I sit like this, I want to pray. Sometimes I will table matter and I say, God, this one, as I open mouth, the next thing I will hear is don't worry about this one. It's a settled case. The way God holds some of you, if God opens your eyes, you will never joke with your position with God. God opens your eyes. See the way He keeps you in the hollow of His hands. Say, oh, I won't shake what God is doing with me like here. The last time I ever had fear in me was when God opened my eyes and I saw what God wants to do with me. I said, okay, I'm a very special person where God is. I was, from then I said, I'm not afraid what the enemy can do. They will try, they may try, they will not get me. So if God can open your eyes and you see what he said to do and what he's already doing with you, you will know that God wants to take you to a greater height. What did we discuss today? We discussed about reason for you to aim at the peak. I said for you to be at the peak, you don't need to be as every other person. Don't be like every other person. Every other person is taken. The only one remaining is you. So bring out the best of you. We talk about you getting people's attention by you being different from every other person. And so that in two, I said the pathway to the mountain top, I said you should overlook the pains of climbing. It's not easy to climb. Overlook the pains. I said you should resist the weight of gravity. Some weight of gravity are negative friends. The opinions of the spectators. Your own thoughts. Present circumstances. Look at me now. My mates are in schools. Look at me now. My mates are making it in life. Look at me now. I can't do this. I can't do that. Overlook those things. I said overlook Satan. I said that fear the spirit of shyness and fear. There is someone here. I used to tell that person when church started me. I said you can do this. 
You can climb to this altar, you can talk, you can pray. Say, I am shy, I am shy. But today when the person climbs this altar, I used to ask myself whether I see the same person that told me she was shy. Kill shyness. Kill shyness and fear. And we talked about the causes and ways to prevent fall from the mountain top. Competition, distraction, arrival mentality, rest, selfishness, and finally, avoiding God. We are we blessed today? We are you really, really blessed today? Are you going to be a mountain top believer? Now stand to your feet and begin to pray to God. Father, we thank you for this message. Ancient of days, we thank you. You deserve the praise. We worship you. We glorify you. You are the I am that I am, omnipotent, omniscient. Nobody can say that he is being made without you. Those who have made it up there, nobody made it, made it on their own. You help them all. Therefore, God, we pray that this morning, as we open our mouths to pray, that everything that is holding us down, Everything that is holding us from being announced to our world. Everything that is delaying us from being celebrated at the top. As we pray this morning, we lose every one of those things. We destroy them in the name of Jesus. Now you open your mouth and say, everything is it self, is it thought, is it present circumstance. All those things I have talked about. Is it arrival mentality? Is it tiredness to serve God? Tiredness to pray? Father, revive my fire again. Refire me. That I will aim for the top. I will be announced in my school. I will be announced. There many are going to school life and I won't go to this. I will go to school. Pray. This is your moment of destiny. Pray it out. Father, I will be celebrated at the top. If we get to a point in my life that this message I learned today will become evident in my life, open your mouth and begin to pray it out in the name of Jesus. Father, my destiny will be announced at the mountain top. I will become a mountain top believer. I will become a mountain top believer. Everything that is is that the enemy has spearheaded against my life, against my family, against the church, against the ministry, will destroy them today. We rise against them today. We break them into pieces today. And we announce our names in the mountain tops. We announce our names in the mountain tops. We announce our names on the mountain tops. Every attempt of the enemy to make us not to be celebrated up there. Every attempt of the enemy to make us to become buried before we are announced. We destroy them. We disappoint the devices of the aircraft that their hands will never perform their enterprise in our lives. We quickly will be celebrated because Jesus has made it announced to us that we will do everything. Through it, we will do everything. We can do everything through Christ who strengthens us. Therefore, we decree that the strength of Christ begin to speak in our lives, begin to speak in our academics, begin to speak in our families, begin to speak in our business. We are there is this unity, this hand family, in families, God comes to perfect it, and we will be unannounced on the mountain tops. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. I decree that you will be announced in the mountain tops. You as a believer, you will be celebrated on the mountain tops. God will use you to announce his name in PGC. God will use you to create testimonies that people will hear around the PGC. God will use you to announce the name of your father. God will use you to announce your name in your family. God will use you to announce great things in your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. Above all, everywhere that the enemy has set traps to make you fall on your way climbing to the top will destroy the enemy. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we appreciate you. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. We, we believe you were blessed with today's episode of Pure Gospel Moment. For prayers, testimonies or further inquiries you can reach Mac Miracle on plus two three four eight one two three two eight eight five nine three that is plus two three four eight one two three two eight eight five nine three God bless you real good